Is it possible to have love without suffering? Unknown. Chapter 1. Raina. So, there's this gorgeous-ass guy I like who's in the same forensic science program as me. We're both sophomores at Odenberry University. We drink macchiatos at the same cafe in between classes. We live on the same block. We work at the same job, and we both ride the loop to and from work. We also happen to be interns at Odenberry Police Department. I had studied his routine like a midterm exam and mimicked his lifestyle to match mine. Unbeknownst to him, none of the things we share in common are pure coincidence. I enrolled myself in the same college as him, became a regular at the Espresso Cafe he frequents, moved to the same neighborhood as him, and applied for the same internship program. However, in spite of me doing all that, my crush has yet to notice me. Partly due to the fact that I'm ugly as fuck. It also doesn't help that I'm socially awkward and suffer from borderline personality disorder. Both make it hard for me to have friends. Hell, I have a hard time just speaking to people. Damn, Raina, would you just say something already? It doesn't have to be funny or witty or charismatic. It just has to be something, I told myself for the hundredth time as I watched Rue from afar. Damn, he's so fine. I'm sure Jesus looked like this man. We were both waiting on the loop, a complimentary bus for college students traveling within the Odenberry city limits. My crush's real name is Sterling Robinson Jr. And he's definitely a whole lot of man. Women couldn't keep their eyes off of him. He was a walking heartthrob at 6'2 with bulging muscles, caramel skin, and hazel eyes. Sterling easily stood out from the other guys in the small town of Odenberry. The city of Odenberry offered its residents a sparse suburban feel, and most of the residents owned their homes. There were a few bars, one movie theater, a handful of gas stations, and several family-owned and fast-food restaurants. Odenberry was comprised of diverse families and an older population. Very few young professionals lived here. Most of them had graduated and taken their degrees to more exciting cities, like Raleigh, Durham, or Charlotte. Odenberry was a quiet, rural town where very little went on, with friendly people who tended to lean on the more conservative side. The couple of city parks and golf courses that we had were all well-kept, and all the schools were above average. The city also held many fun events during the summer to bring people closer together, and unite our small-knit community. Aside from a recent string of murders, the town was relatively safe. We were located just outside of Apex, North Carolina, and with a population of 12,758 people, less than 1% of them being black, there weren't a lot of brothers in Odenberry. Definitely not any that were worth a second glance. Rue's self-esteem had to have been on 100 Too bad I couldn't say the same about myself. My homely appearance kept me from uttering a single word to him, or any other man for that matter. With midnight black skin, a hooked nose, massive overbite, and eyes that slightly bugged out of my head, I was the raw embodiment of unattractiveness. As a child, I was often teased by a boy named Derek for looking like a pug. As luck would have it, he also attended the same college as me and Rue where he still taunted me to this day. In addition to looking like a dog, I was gangly, flat-chested, and frail. I'm talking so damn skinny, I could see out the peephole with two eyes. Who the hell would want to bring home a skinny-ass, bug-eyed toothpick to meet their parents? Hell, I couldn't blame Rue for always overlooking me. Why would I, when every man in Odeberry failed to notice me as well? Suddenly, the loop came careening towards our stop, and like clockwork, Rue and I hopped on at exactly 8.30 p.m. It came every 15 minutes, but I always made sure to ride the same bus as Rue. And as always, I made it my mission to sit as close to him as possible. He had this earthy scent, like sandalwood, that warmed my body and made my nipples tingle. It was a scent that had become highly addictive for me. 
and I seized every opportunity to inhale it. Welcome aboard the loop. Please hold on. This bus is departing. Since there weren't many seats on the loop, most of the passengers had to hold onto the overhead rails. Through the crowd of passengers, I managed to steal a quick glance at Rue. As always, he had his head buried in his iPhone with a pair of AirPods in his ears. I craned my neck a little to see his screen. He had just opened up the Apple Music app and was currently typing into its search box, Kanye West, white dress. I pulled out my phone and plugged the artist and song title into my notes app. I had never heard the song before, but I planned to listen to it later on in hopes of understanding Rue just a bit more. It already felt like we had a connection, even though he didn't know my name or a single thing about me. He probably didn't even know that I existed. Without warning, he lifted his head and my heart dropped to my feet. I just knew we were about to finally make eye contact. But instead of looking my way, he looked at the pretty full-breasted white girl beside me, then smiled. Shit, just my luck. He'd rather have a snow bunny instead of a sister, like most of the brothers in Olderberry. My cheeks flushed with humiliation as bitterness twined around my heart like poisonous vines. Swallowing my embarrassment, I lowered my head in shame and waited for the bus ride to come to an end. Twenty minutes later, I realized I had dozed off, but thankfully, the bus hadn't reached me and Rue's stop yet. I immediately looked in his direction, but noticed that he and the busty blonde that was next to me were both gone. Had they left together? Did he go home with her? Like a bobblehead, my neck swiveled erratically as I desperately looked around for Rue. Unfortunately, I didn't see him anywhere. Please hold on. This bus is stopping. Please collect your belongings and watch your step as you exit. The bus had finally reached my destination, but instead of disembarking with the love of my life, I was forced to climb off the loop alone. Where the hell is he? I wondered. Pocketing my curiosity for the time being, I embarked on the short journey home. Me and my roommate, Quinn, shared a two-bedroom at Eddington Apartments that was conveniently located on the same block as Rue's town home. Only his place was on Overton Street, and mine was on South White Street, but both streets met at the intersection. The post office, gym, library, and senior citizens' home were all close by. We lived in a highly walkable, predominantly white, middle-class neighborhood, though I could only afford to since I had a roommate. Odenberry might have lacked diversity, but it was still quite expensive for a college student. Being a college student and part-time employee himself, I still didn't know how Rue was able to afford a place of his own, especially a lavish townhome. How much did he receive in student loans? Was he using it to pay his rent or mortgage? Maybe one day I'll find out, I told myself. Maybe one day I'll find out all of his secrets. Noticing that I was about three or so yards away from his town home, I stopped in my tracks and stared at his dwelling. All of the lights were off, so I knew the place was empty. I also knew he lived alone because I'd seen him come and go on several occasions, and he was always solo. I wonder what it looks like inside. Is it fancy? Or is he simple, like me? My apartment was definitely nothing to write home about. What does his house smell like? Mmm, I bet it smells like rosewood and aftershave. My clit began to throb at the mere thought. Before I knew it, I was standing on his doorstep with my hand hovering above the knob. If only it was as simple as twisting it and walking right in, I thought. But I knew better than to believe it was as easy as that. Life just didn't work that way. Regardless, I still closed my fist around the bronze knob and gave it a gentle twist. Oh my God, I murmured in disbelief. As if the stalker gods had answered my prayers, the door to his townhome magically opened, granting me access. 
I nervously peered over my shoulder to confirm no nosy-ass neighbors were in sight. After making sure the coast was clear, I slipped inside and quietly closed the door behind me. Once inside, I drew in a deep breath and noticed that his home didn't smell anything like rosewood or aftershave. It actually reeked of marijuana and red honeysuckle nectar. If I had to guess, I'd say he probably tried to mask the scent of weed with air freshener. Rue smokes pot? Wow. Would have never guessed it. I eagerly took in my surroundings. The Egyptian-inspired paintings on the wall, the elegant crown moldings, the polished cherry hardwood floors, the pod lights, the record player, the fireplace, the furniture. It was nothing at all like what I had pictured. And believe me, I had spent countless hours trying to imagine what Rue's place looked like inside. After walking through his opulent town home, I discovered his bedroom on the second floor next to the master bathroom and den. He had a teal platform bed with a button-tuft headboard and cream throw pillows with teal embellishments. There was a cream throw blanket at the foot of the bed. So, this is where he sleeps. I wonder what he dreams about. Beside the bed was a nightstand with a built-in bookshelf. Surprisingly, there wasn't a single television in the house. Did Rue not own a TV? Did he not enjoy binge watching shows on Netflix or watching Sports Center like most guys? Hmm, what type of man is Rue exactly? I put my questions on the back burner as I kicked off my high top vans and climbed into his plush king size bed, which creaked a little underneath my weight. His sheets and pillows smelled just like him, relishing in his scent. I snuggled his largest pillow as I pretended it was him. Why the fuck am I doing this crazy shit? I asked myself. Why on earth am I doing this? Because of love. That tiny voice in the back of my mind declared. I'm doing it because of love. That same voice had gotten me into a lot of trouble throughout life. You see, Rue wasn't the first person I had shamelessly become obsessed over. There were others, plenty others but none of them had the same hold on me as Rue, and they damn sure weren't as fine. Sliding my hands down the front of my body, I stopped in my waist and gradually unbuttoned my Walmart brand jeans. Easing them down my bony legs, I slipped my right hand inside my panties and pressed my middle finger into my love beam. Mm. A sharp gasp escaped me as I felt my clit swell up. Rue, I moaned, my pussy throbbing with need. Fuck me, Rue. I started rubbing my button faster and harder, making myself wetter with each stroke. Yeah, just like that. Just like that. Shit. I panicked. Grabbing his pillow, I placed it between my legs and began grinding it against my vagina. Oh, I'm about to come, Rue. I'm about to come, baby. I started moving it faster and faster as I pretended the pillow was Rue. Ugh. My orgasm was powerful and unlike any other. Probably because I was playing with my pussy in his bed. It didn't get any better than that. No, scratch that. The only thing better would be the real thing. I saw Rue for the first time three years ago at a local gym, not too far from where we live. I was touring the facility back when I foolishly thought I had the discipline to work out regularly. Even though I was skinny as hell, I believed I could somehow obtain curves. Rue was lifting weights with no shirt on and beads of sweat were glistening against his muscular body. I found myself salivating at the mouth as I watched him. The man was so damn sexy, it didn't make any sense. I guess you could say it was love at first sight. Or lust. Whichever one you want to call it. Either way, I was smitten ever since then. I made it my business to include myself in every aspect of his life. Ultimately, I wanted him to notice me, but was too shy to eke out a simple hello. A normal, confident person would have broken the ice by now. However, I was the furthest thing from ordinary. That much was evident by my current situation. 
Pulling my hand out of my pants, I inhaled the scent on my fingers. It smelled of musk and metal, an odd combination. Despite my aberrant odor, I smiled, then climbed off the bed and straightened up my clothes. If Rue knew that I was stalking him, he probably put a restraining order on my ass, just like my other crushes had done. Rue didn't take me as a type to play those kind of games. He wasn't a mean guy or anything like that. He just didn't look like the type to tolerate bullshit. Regardless of his stern and no-nonsense demeanor, he was a people person, funny, charming, handsome, quick-witted, approachable. And did I mention handsome? His cool, laid-back personality drew everyone to him, and he was, without a doubt, a pussy magnet. All the bitches loved him, and all the fellas wanted to be cool with him. People didn't ignore or avoid him at all costs like they did my ugly ass. Who am I kidding? There was no way in hell Rue would ever entertain someone as unattractive as me. A man of his caliber was far beyond my grasp, and I knew it. But shit, a girl could still dream, right? After composing myself, I left the room and headed back downstairs. I was just about to leave when I noticed a door near the kitchen that presumably led to the basement. There was an electronic deadbolt attached to it that required a passcode to unlock it. Once again, my curiosity was piqued. What did he have inside that needed to be locked away? Was it valuables? Important documents, maybe? Hmm. Only one way to find out. Walking over to the door, I knelt down so that I was eye level with the deadbolt. Perhaps the passcode is his birthday. I thought with hopeful intent. I knew it by heart because I followed him on all of his social media platforms via ghost pages. Like a creep, I watched him celebrate his birthday every year with close friends, wishing I'd gotten an invitation as well. Anyway, I quickly inputted his birthday only for the door to remain shut. Damn, I muttered. Might as well give up. I'll literally be here all night trying to guess this shit. Chalking it up as a loss, I turned on my heel to leave, then ran smack into Rue's well-defined chest. As usual, he was wearing an 18-karat gold-plated chain with an unk pendant. He never left home without it. Damn. I had been caught red-handed. Looking for something? He asked in a grave yet smooth voice. Usually, hearing him speak made my panties moist. But this time, it made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Especially since he was carrying a black heavy-duty trash bag over his shoulder that was leaking fresh blood. It didn't take a genius to figure out he had a dead body inside. Whatever I was looking for, I had surely found. Who is this person? I asked myself. The Rue I know would never commit such a heinous crime. The Rue I know would never murder someone. Then again, I never really knew Rue to begin with. I only knew the perfect image of him I had built up in my head. The Rue that clearly didn't exist. My heart was beating so hard, I thought it would burst right out of my chest. Never in my life had I been so scared and I suddenly felt as if I were trapped in a nightmare. A nightmare that I couldn't wake up from no matter how hard I tried. Shit. Shit. I'm going to die. I'm going to fucking die here. What a sad way to end what could have been a love story. Please, please don't kill me. I cried softly. I don't want to... I didn't have time to tell him how badly I wanted to live because he punched me dead in the face, knocking my ass out cold. 